sorry, our Cushaw squash did very well this year. You can see how large this one is. It's pretty amazing, ain't it? It's just like you just want to admire it. I mean, Corey's been admiring this one this morning. I guess we grew about six. Some of them are this size. Some of them are slightly smaller, but all of them are very large. So what do you do with it? Why do you even attempt to eat something like this? Well, there's several different ways we like to eat it, but today I'm gonna to show you how I like to process it. Now you can can squash with a pressure canner, you can do that, but typically I freeze mine because the things that I'm, um, if I freeze it, what I'm gonna be using it for typically is to make cakes or to make pies or pumpkin rolls. All those things that you do with pumpkins, you can do with squash too. And Sometimes I think they're better, actually, than doing them with pumpkin because it just seems like a richer flavor. Anyway, so I freeze mine in those, um, kind of in those measurements that I know that I'm going to use. So today we're going to show you how to process this thing, this big Kershaw. Some people you'll hear call them Kershaw. They put that R in there. So that's always an interesting thing I like to listen for. Um, but they're just a beautiful squash. They're so pretty. Um, makes you think of fall of the year which is getting to be that time here in Appalachia but also very tasty and now we're going to show you how to put it in the freezer so as you might guess the toughest part of processing one of these is cutting it up and there are various different ways you can do it and you have to be careful of course you have to have a sharp knife and you just have to have some power behind it too I like to go ahead and chop off the top part of it and that part's edible, so we will definitely use it. And then I like to think about it as you don't, like you don't need to like cut it all the way through like you're slicing a slice of bread. You just need to cut through, because the inside is hollow through the part to that in various places. So this is like, this is how I like to do it. And there's all different kinds of ways of doing it. A really interesting way that I've seen recently on a video, um, and I will link to that because I think it's very interesting and a lot easier for, would be for a lot of people, is that it was a gentleman that actually just cut a square out in it. So just cut a square. Then he reaches his hand down in there and gets out all the seeds and all the pulp from the center. And then he bakes the entire thing. I like to bake mine, but I cut it up before I bake it. But he was doing that. Um, and then he would bake it. And then it was, once you get it out then, it's just, you know, it's you can basically just tear it apart with your hands. So that was a great video. And I will link to that below. And I would do that, except I'm really impatient. And I like to just do it and be done with it. But, um, but his technique was awesome for anybody that's intimidated by cutting one of these. So again, I'm not trying to go all the way through it. I'm just trying to cut down through that first layer. And then I'm going to turn it around and kind of work with the, the um, edge of the top of the knife. And then I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to do that again. About a quarter maybe through. So again, I'm going to just think about going part way through. And then I'm going to get my knife out, turn it around, and go this way. I'll turn it a little bit more. Now I'm just going back and making sure that all of my, um, the marks that I were making kind of come all the way to the, t to the bottom, or the cuts that I was making. And as you're doing this, you can begin to feel it giving way. So now I've got all those, you can see how it's beginning to to start to come apart for me. Boy, I didn't do a good job of turning mine over on the corners. I think I got really close. So you can see how it's beginning to come apart. And once you've got it apart, then these size pieces are much easier to work with than working with that big piece. So while you need to be careful, you need to be cautious, you also need to have some determination. A lot of times when I'm cutting up something this big, heck, when I'm cutting up a watermelon, 
if the girls are around, they get all paranoid like I'm going to chop off my fingers. And I'm like, girls, for one thing, I've been doing this for 30 years. For another thing, you, I mean, I'm not going to let a watermelon or a squash intimidate me. So you have to have a little bit of determination. Now, I'm not a real strong person as in uh, when you think about muscles like lifting weight or anything. If Matt was here, he could have made that look a lot smoother. But all that matters to me is in the end, I got the job done. And now I'm going to get to put up this great um, cushaw that we grew in our garden. And I'm going to be able to feed my family with it. That's what matters to me. So the next part, now that you've got it cut up, is that you need to, to get the seeds and this, the stuff that surrounds that membrane, the kind of stringy stuff that surrounds the seeds out. Now the seeds, they're great to roast if you want to clean them up and roast them. They're great, of course, to save for next year so you can plant them again and have more of these wonderful squash. Um, and my chickens love them. I'm sure other animals, if you have pigs or hogs or whatever, I'm sure they would too. So if you take a spoon, you can kind of just scrape and scrape the stringy, stringy part out off. So now we've got all the seeds and the pulp scraped out of the insides of the pieces like this. I took that top piece and I cut the top off of it, that part, and then I sliced it down the middle because that's also edible. So we want to make sure we get that. Now you could put these, cut them up into smaller pieces and boil them in water and get your pulp out that way. Granny did that sometimes when I was a girl, but I prefer to put them in the oven. So I will put these in a pan and put them in the oven, like say maybe on 400 degrees, and I'll cover them with some full. And I will let them bake until they are so tender that I can just take a fork and scrape out the pulp. And it's really great to do it that way because then you can get so close to the rind when you're scraping out that you, you really don't waste anything. So I love that part of, the, of doing it in the oven and not trying to peel it with a um, vegetable peeler, which is what I would do if I was going to um, use it fresh, if I was going to cook it or make soup out of it or something like that. But um, So now we're at that point and we're ready to, to put them in the oven. They will, while they're baking, like a little bit of liquid will come out of them. So you want to be aware of that when you're thinking of what kind of pan or pans that you want to put them in. It won't be a whole lot of liquid, but it will be some that will, will ooze out as they bake. So if you prefer not to use full to cover it with, you really don't have to. The, the thing that that helps prevent is that sometimes as it roasts, you'll get, especially along the edges, it'll get a little brown. It'll turn dark and kind of caramelize a little bit with those sugars coming out. Now, if that doesn't bother you, that's the only thing the full prevents. It might actually hold in some of the moisture too, but um, that's strictly, I guess, personal preference. So if you're against using full or don't, don't prefer not to use it, you, it's really not necessary. And I think those little brown bits just add a richness and a um, deepness to the flavor, whether you're actually making pies out of this in the future or soup or whatever it is that you're doing. So I've got the squash out of the oven. Uh, I baked it at 400 for, I don't know, 40 or 50 minutes. You can just keep check on it, keep checking back and see when it's, uh, when you can tell it's done. When it's really done, and this has been cooling for a few minutes, you can see it's just so tender that that, that skin will just come off. You can see right here the difference. This is the pan that I did not cover full with. I didn't put full on it. So you can see how it kind of got brown around the edges. Now, if that bothers you, you could discard it or you could make sure that you cover it and then that won't happen. Here, this piece over here is a piece that I did cover and you can see it doesn't have any of those brown places. See how tender it is though? That it's just literally falling apart. So now it's just a matter of scraping this goodness out into a, into a bowl and then packaging it in your bag. So we're going to do that next. So I just like to scrape off and you can see my, this large piece is already broke into uh, some smaller pieces, which really makes it easier. And then as you just scrape out the, the insides of it, you can get really close to the skin, which I like so that you don't have to waste anything. Now you may notice when I'm scraping this stuff off, how some of it, let me find a better piece here. Let me finish this one and I'll show you what I'm talking about. If you get any little pieces of skin in there, you can go back and pick those out. 
but you can see that the texture kind of can be stringy like see there's a string so that doesn't bother me for some people that it might bother i've seen people that will do they get to this step and then they scrape when they scrape all this out they run it through their food processor so then it really you know if you've ever bought a store-bought like can of pumpkin or something that really smooth texture if that's what you're interested in having then you could do that just run it through your food processor and it'll chop up all those pieces of um, strings of, of the squash and it'll be more like that kind of parade pureed pumpkin that you can buy in a store. That part doesn't bother me, so I just leave it as is. I'm going to get Corey to come help me finish this part, and then we'll show you the last step, which is just adding it to a, a freezer bag and putting it in the freezer. Okay, now we've got it all the, the pulp scraped out into the bowl. And as I said, if you want to put it in a processor, you can do that. I took like a, a chopper and kind of chopped it up a little. And you can even put your hands in there and really work it to get all those strings. It's still going to, not going to be as smooth as if you put it in a processor, but that will help some. Then today, you can can, you can can squash, but I'm not doing that today. I'm just freezing mine. So I have my freezer bag here, and I try to think of it as how, what amounts am I going to need? What do I commonly make? So one thing I would commonly make with this is kushaw pies, kind of like pumpkin pies, except using the kushaw. So in, for my family, I might make two pies at a time. So that would be four cups that I would need. So I'm going to freeze four cups. I also love to make um, pumpkin rolls. We really love pumpkin rolls. And that recipe calls for two thirds of a cup, much smaller. So I'll use a smaller bag and then I'll make some bags of two thirds of a cup. That way when it comes time, if I want to make pumpkin pies, kushaw pies, or if I want to make pumpkin rolls, it's just easy to grab. I've already got it measured out and I grab it out of the freezer and don't even have to think about it. So once I get my um, squash in the bag, move this over here. Of course, you just need to make sure it's sealed at the top, but I like to, to push it down and really push the um, squash out when I'm thinking about putting them in my freezer and then as the air goes out the, the bottom, then I close it the rest of the way. So then I end up with some, with what looks like this. So then I will lay this flat on like a baking sheet, a cookie sheet, and I'll freeze them that way. I'll put them in the freezer. And then once they're froze, then you can stand them up this way or lay them flat, do whatever you want to. It just helps with storing in your freezer. Because if not, um, which I've done before, it all kind of piles up at the bottom into this little <laughs> weird glob, if you don't. So that's how I do mine. I hope that you'll leave a comment and let me know if you if you grow kushaws, how do you process yours? Do you can them? I've never canned kushaw. I would like to try that sometime. So please leave me a comment and leave any tips or tricks that you use. We'd all love to hear them. And as always, please drop back by often as we celebrate Appalachia.